This video gives an overview of power grading, a system for helping teachers grade short answers at scale. While MOOCs and other forms of online education have made great advances in reaching large numbers of students, there are still significant challenges to testing and grading at scale. Modern web technologies are extremely effective for the one-to-many direction, broadcasting lectures and classroom materials to thousands of students, but the many-to-one direction is far more challenging. Once you get beyond simple multiple-choice questions, getting answers or feedback from students at that scale can be overwhelming. That raises the question of why we shouldn't just use multiple-choice questions, and the reason is that not all tests are created equal. Learning science has shown that there are significant differences in educational value from different kinds of questions. On the low end are true, false, and multiple-choice questions, which are called recognition questions, because you can pick the answer out of a list. The next group, fill in the blank and short answer questions, provide substantially more educational value, as they are recall-oriented questions where the student has to actually produce the answer. Most valuable is the last category, synthesis, where the student is applying learned knowledge to a new problem, like an essay or project. In this work, we focus on short answer questions, where we define short answers as being from a few words to a sentence in length. But how can we help teachers grade thousands of such short answer questions? We call our approach power grading because we think of it as a power tool for grading. The core idea is to use machine learning and natural language processing to group student answers into a hierarchy of clusters and subclusters. Once we have that grouping, we can let the teachers grade and provide feedback at the cluster and subcluster level, as well as mark individual answers. This allows teachers to stay in the loop, directly interacting with the students and their raw answers, but amplify their capabilities so that they can handle much larger classes. We'll now do a quick demo of the power grading system. In this demo, we're looking at answers from a thousand mechanical Turk workers to a question from the United States citizenship exam. In this case, the question is who or what makes federal or national laws in the United States? On the left side, we see the clusters that are formed from the student answers, and if we click on a cluster, we see a range of subclusters corresponding to that cluster. On the far right, we see the list of individual answers underneath. Now, for this first cluster, uh, the answer summary is Congress, which is a pretty reasonable answer. And if we look at the subcluster, most of these answers are talking about Congress as being the correct solution to the problem. So we're going to go ahead and mark this entire cluster as correct. And with one mouse click, we've marked 378 answers, 54% of the task. If we now look through some of these other clusters, and look at this one in particular, the Senate and the House of Representatives, uh, we can look in the subclusters and find that while some of them make sense, like Congress, House and Senate, Legislative Branch, one of the subclusters here doesn't quite have it right. They just mentioned the Senate when they should be mentioning the House as well. So we can give these students partial credit with a single click and then mark and say uh, both houses of Congress are involved. And by hitting return, we apply that feedback to all the students who gave that answer. And as a result, with that single stroke, apply feedback, rich feedback that's relevant to the student's performance directly to many more students than just one. We can then say that the rest of the answers in this cluster were correct and mark it that way. And if we look at our progress, we can see that we've graded 66% of the answers with a very small amount of effort. While the demo shows the potential benefits of power grading, we needed to investigate how it works in the hands of teachers. We conducted a user study with 25 teachers using both the power grading interface and a standard interface which contained a list of answers without the clusters. These plots show the grading progress of individual teachers over time. In the standard interface, you see teachers progress in a linear trajectory, grading answers at some roughly constant rate. Some are fast and some are slow. In the power grading interface, on the other hand, you see teachers jump up by leaps and bounds as they're grading clusters and subclusters as well as individual answers. When we quantified the speed in the two conditions, we found that the fastest teachers using power grading were up to 20 times faster than when using the standard interface without any loss in grading accuracy. Finally, it's interesting to hear what the teachers had to say about the power grading interface. Participant 12 said, this format made it easy to see patterns in student thinking whether correct patterns or errors. Another participant said it made answer trends more easily identifiable. A third participant said that breaking the answers down into clusters allowed them to spot patterns to be more consistent in grading, that the information seemed less overwhelming when presented this way. 
Given these preliminary results and very positive feedback, we're optimistic power grading could be broadly useful to teachers everywhere who are faced with the challenges of grading short answers at scale. For more information, including how to get in touch with us and the research papers describing the details behind this work, please visit bit.ly slash powergrading.